All right, Kim, everyone's favorite. <laughs> Addendum for property subject to mandatory membership in a property owner's association. You know, saying that the other day, I don't know. If, I don't know if you've seen the meme or anything yet. Yes, I've seen the meme. <laughs> it says a group of Karens is also known as a homeowners association. All right, so there's your joke for the day. Um, but with all seriousness, let's go ahead and jump into the Karen uh, addendum. I mean, the <laughs> membership in a property owners association. Uh, what in the heck is this thing all about? Well, anytime that a property is listed in a mandatory homeowners association, mm -hmm. it's part of it. What if it's not mandatory? Then you don't have to do it. Okay. All right. Great. So if it's voluntary or it's expired, you don't have to do it. Okay. You're all good. Great. If you're the listing agent, you want to do your due diligence up front whenever you list the property, and you want to find out how long it's actually going to take you to get the docs. Mm, yes. Because as a listing agent, buyer's agents typically put in paragraph one that they'll deliver it within 10 days or 14 days. Well, a seller really doesn't want to spend the money to get all that information until you've gotten loan approval and you've been through uh, appraisal process yep. and so you really kind of want more days there if you're the listing agent mm -hmm. however if you're the buyer's agent and they want to know if they you can want. put anything <laughs> in the property that might be that the HOA docs might preclude then you know they may want it they may want it during the option just know if you're the listing agent you've done your homework up front and you know when to do that because here's what is so important if you do not deliver to the buyer those documents by the days listed in one or two the buyer has a way out of the contract an right. easy way and so when agents come in to me and say how do I get my buyer out of this contract this is the very first addendum I go to yeah and start counting days exactly and then we advise them to seek the advice of an attorney that's right all right um, and then paragraph three here would be what well if buyer has received um, uh, approve, approval of the subdivision information before signing the contract. So, um, it could be that you've already done your due diligence and you've already you've already gotten it. And a lot of homeowners associations that are not ran by property management companies, um, they actually have them on a website where any homeowner can go on and get them. Yeah. So, again, do your due diligence as a listing agent. And then under what circumstance would you choose buyer does or buyer does not require an updated resale certificate? So the buyer does not require subdivision information. Okay. So the subdivision information could be if a buyer is moving within the same subdivision, mm -hmm. has lived in the subdivision before, uh, or knows the subdivision HOA is about to expire, because sometimes they do expire. Yeah. Um, so keep in mind though, if there is a mortgage, the lender is going to want a resale certificate regardless of whether you've used the addendum or not. Yeah. So what I'm talking about right here is this one where it says buyer does or buyer does not require an updated resale Sell certificate. certificate. Yeah. So that's what, up to the lender. That's yeah. That's going to be totally up to the lender. Up to the lender. Yeah. And then uh, as Kim mentioned here on paragraph four, it's buyer does not require delivery of the subdivision information. This would be if they're moving within the same subdivision. And once again, it all refers back to the lender because the one who's paying gets the final say That's all right. the time. All right, uh, let's go with paragraph B, material changes. What does this mean? Well, if seller becomes aware of any material changes in the subdivision information, seller will promptly give notice to the buyer. So if the seller finds out that there's an assessment or if the seller finds out that um, there's any type of uh, new requirements being put on the homeowners based from the HOA, like if the entire you know uh, perimeter of the, of the subdivision needs a new fence and they're trying to raise money to pay for that new fence. Or if the, sub, or if the seller finds out that they're getting ready to fill in the pool and mm -hmm. uh, cover it in with dirt and lay some concrete over the top, which has happened. Has happened. <laughs> has happened. They're obligated to disclose that. Or if the seller is changing management company so a lot of times you'll have individuals that manage the HOA and they change over to a management company and so that is something else you also need to notify okay. anything that changes at all with the HOA or any of the common areas you have to notify the buyer great all right how about fees so except as provided in paragraph 4 paragraphs A D and E buyers shall pay any assessment and all association fees or other charges associated with the transfer of the property not to exceed. Now, a good listing agent has done their due diligence and they know exactly what this is going to be. Mm -hmm. 
but this is saying that the buyer will pay X amount of dollars and the seller will pay the rest. Now this is why it's such a good idea to have an amazing relationship with a title person. I don't care what title company you know. choose, but having a relationship with a great title person uh, because they know they do these for uh, they do these every single day mm -hmm. uh, You can ask them. Hey, you know this subdivision What do you think something like that is going to cost and they should be able to go back and Think about the previous transactions that they've done and say hey, you know It's probably gonna be four hundred fifty dollars or yeah. or whatever it is so that way You know what you're getting into and you know what your clients are getting into Yeah, most of your title companies do a running list exactly exactly, okay uh, uh, Deposits for reserves Buyers shall pay any deposits for reserved or required at closing by the association. So typically, when the association is trying to raise funds for a future project, they will assess it on the buyer at closing. Mm -hmm. And so any deposits at that time will have to be made. And that, again, is something that a buyer needs to know um, because you would hate for it to get to the last minute and they're doing a $650 offense assessment and the buyer doesn't have it. Exactly, exactly. Okay, authorization. Seller authorizes the association to release and provide the subdivision information and any updated resale certificate if required or if requested by the buyer, the title company, or any broker to the sale. If buyer does not require the subdivision information or an updated resale certificate and the title company requires information from the association, such as status of dues, special assessments, violations of covenants and, and restrictions, and a waiver of any right of first refusal, checkbox buyer or checkbox seller shall pay the title company the cost of obtaining the information prior to the title company ordering the information. Now, this is just an additional fee that's, that's right. been built in here and you get to choose who's going to pay that additional bonus fee right. to, the, uh, to, to the ownership, the uh, property owners association. Now, here's why we have this form it's not only to give you information about the fact that the property is in a property owners association it's because in the state of texas there is no regulatory body on a property owners association and theoretically a property a property owners association could raise their dues every single year a limitless amount and you would be stuck paying that and uh, in, uh, I believe it's uh, Hayes, no, it's not Hayes County. Um, Harris. Harris County is the number one uh, county in the state of the Texas, Texas for foreclosures being filed on property owners based upon the fact that they're in a property owners association and have uh, dues that are behind. Now, that's the, like there's like 2,000 every year yeah. that are filed in Harris County. Yeah. And now most other counties don't, don't go that it. crazy, but for some reason it's one of their favorite things to do down in Harris County. It is, and you know they've taken away senior citizens' homes and foreclosed, and so it, it is, it's a very serious um, stipulation. So if there's an HOA, the buyer fully needs to be aware of what they're getting into. Yeah, which is why these documents aren't something to just gloss over um and if if your if your buyer has several pets they're going to want to read this because yeah. some hoas uh have uh restrictions on how many pets a person can have um so if you know that they're raising a dog farm uh, or something like that uh you're going to need to make sure that they read the uh the um, HOA. HOA docs to make sure that it's really something that they can do there and that they have the ability to operate in the things that they want to do. And another thing that you are going to want to look at is, let's say that you have a commercial vehicle yes. that's wrapped or something like that. Make sure that you've read the HOA documents that uh, to check to see if there's any uh, preclusions that prevent you from parking that in your driveway because there are HOAs who will not allow commercial vehicles yeah. to be parked in driveways. Or a boat, mm -hmm. or an RV, or yep. a trailer. Yep, so if those are things that are important to you, make sure you read this. Well, regardless, read the whole thing um, and it'll put you right to sleep at night, I promise. That or the deed of trust. There you go. Anything else you want to add about the mandatory membership in a property owners association, AKA the Karen document? Yes. Do not scare your buyer over it because HOAs provide a numerous amount of good things. They keep the properties up. They keep it uniform. They keep the common areas 
up and taken care of and so there's many good things about an HOA. There absolutely are and um, uh, just keep in mind there as well that um, you do HOAs were designed to keep communities looking great That's right. and there are going to be expectations of you to make sure that you are meeting the criteria for the uh, HOA that you live in. That is correct. All right thanks Kim.